Good evening everyone, um, I'm here to do a, another book review, um, the one I did last night got quite a lot of uh, uh, good feedback so I'm going to do another one today. Um, what we've got today is A Walk Through Hell uh, from Aftershock Comics and this one is written by Garth Ennis who you may know wrote Preacher and The Boys amongst other things. Um, the art in this is by Goran Suzuka, I hope I pronounced that right. He did uh, Why the Last Man, Hellblazer, Deadpool and a load of others. Um, colours are by Ive Forsina, who was nominated for an award for his work on Thor. And the lettering is by Rob Steen, who incidentally was the uh, illustrator for Ricky Gervais's Flaminals. So it's a pretty impressive team put together. Um, and this is a pretty impressive book, I'll be honest. It's, um, it's a full-on horror tale and it is dark and pretty spooky and scary and Garth Ennis is a master of that sort of stuff. So. Um, I will tell you a little bit about it. So, the the main story centres around two characters called uh, two FBI agents called Shaw and McGregor, and they get called to an incident where two other FBI agents have been sent to investigate this warehouse, and went in and never came back out. Now, when they get there. They are confronted by the police that are there and the SWAT team, or tactical as it's called in the book. Um, and they're explained by the tactical team that the guys went in, they were in there for about 30 seconds and came back out again. Um, when, they, when they came back out, they wouldn't go back in and they said they experienced utter dread, despair, everything else. So the two FBI agents go in and from then starts a pretty messed up story. It's told through a series of flashbacks, which is really nicely done. Um, sometimes telling a story through a series of flashbacks can be a little bit um, hackneyed and um, can kind of like dis detract you uh, distract you from the main story. This is brilliantly paced. It's a little bit happens in the main story and then it flashes back, a little bit more happens and then it flashes back and it gradually builds this tale about um, a paedophile who um, who they, the FBI agents believe has been in, uh, has, sorry, um, uh, about a paedophile who has been getting other paedophiles to help him um, uh, abduct children and then the kids never turn up again and then the other paedophiles end up uh, committing suicide and there was 11 of them. Um, now when the FBI agents turn up at, at this warehouse uh, the next thing they know they're waking up on the floor and neither of them have a pulse and it's <laughs> this book is going to be very difficult for me to describe what is actually happening without giving away too many spoilers because it has to be read to be enjoyed. Um, so I will try to avoid... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll try to avoid um, any more of the actual story and I will... because I want you to read this book. It, it is that good. I mean, I want you to read it. If, you, if you're if you a little bit squeamish or you don't like the horror stuff, then maybe this isn't for you. But if you like that sort of thing, I haven't read much better than this for some time, I'll be honest. Um, there's So let's, let's talk about the actual way the book is laid out. Um, the artwork, uh, I won't show you because it hopefully will be coming up over my right shoulder. The artwork is phenomenal and the choice of the way the story is, 
is told is um, is incredible, really. And Garth Ennis is a master of spinning a really interesting tale. And this, it doesn't. What's it, what's good about it is that it is consistent all the way through. It it does build to a climax. So this is only the end of volume one. So there is a second volume. Um, it does build to a climax, but at the same time, it's consistent through every book. If you were reading this as uh, single issues, the the end of every issue was a really good cliffhanger for the next one, you know. And I would, you know, um, it would have. I think it would have been quite frustrating to read it as single issues, mainly because you'd have to wait nigh on a month to get to the next bit. Um, the two, the two main characters, the female main character, which is Agent Shaw, she is towards her late forties, heaven forbid, who'd want to be there. Um, uh, she's towards her late forties, hasn't really got as far as that she would like, has a bit of a persecution complex, um, and questionable morals. McGregor, on the other hand, he's a gay man. He um, is pretty much um, seeing the world through quite a cynical view, um, looks at things like the presidential election, the uh, terminology used in hate speech, uh, the alt-right and everything else throughout the book. Well, in the flashbacks, it keeps coming back to that kind of... Um, uh, it keeps coming back to that that kind of rhetoric, and he wants to, and he's constantly um, saying that you know, as a gay man, the political spectrum at the moment is not very welcoming, and we all know that that is true, obviously. Um, <clears throat> what I do, I mean, it's what is very clever is because the the warehouse is generally shot in pretty much darkness. Um, the the lighting and the colour palette choice for the warehouse scenes are very, very good. Um, and that contrasts quite nicely with the flashback scenes. But without it being, you know, I mean, a lot of times they, they'll choose a black and white maybe for a flashback scene or go from very stark colours to very bright colours to differentiate the two. This uses um, slightly different palettes, but they are still kind of uh, similar, yet it's more the story and the tone of the way the story changes between the scenes that really kind of highlights a different mood between the main characters when they're doing their investigation and to when they kind of wake up in this kind of whatever it is. Um, obviously, the title says that it's a walk through hell. How, how, whether it is actually hell or something else, we don't find out in this book. So that will be something that's left for number two. You will find the subject matter uncomfortable, but then I think that is exactly as intended. And if you don't find the subject matter uncomfortable, then I think there's probably something a little bit wrong with you anyway. Um, I want to see where this goes, and and I think um, anyone out there who likes something a little bit macabre or a little bit different will we should pick this up. Um, I don't think that there's many better horror books out there than this one. I mean, ho horror isn't really my main go-to when I pick up a book to read. And I've got another one which is coming up um, in one of my later videos. I've, I've got Something is Killing the Children, number two, uh, volume one, sorry. Um, I did a review of the first comic of that on our podcast, and I'm really excited to read the rest of that one. This feels very different to that. This one feels like um, very human in its re responses to its situation in the characterization 
I mean, Ennis has always been very good at writing very real feeling characters, even in the most um, fantastical situations, his characters have always felt pretty real and pretty grounded. So um, I would suggest that you check this one out. Again, it will be available as and when all this craziness is over. Hopefully you won't all have ordered it on Amazon by then. Um, and it is great. 10 out of 10. Go and buy it. And I hope to see you soon.